Example two. Now, Jim has borrowed $8,000 from his parents for a car and he's required to pay back his parents $200 each week until he has paid them back. So question A says represent this cost on a graph using the y-axis for his debt and the x-axis for the number of weeks. Okay, so we'll start by filling in a table of values just to help us visualize what's what's going on here. So after the W is your week, so after zero weeks, he still owes his parents eight thousand dollars in debt. D for debt, W for weeks, right? How much does he owe them after five weeks? Well, if he's paying them two hundred a week, we multiply it by five. He will have paid them a thousand dollars off his loan, so he now owes them seven grand instead of eight. Okay, then after 10 weeks, if he's paying 200 a week times 10, he will have paid two grand off his loan. He now owes six thousand dollars. And it's if you keep working them out, each time he's paid off a thousand dollars until he reaches 40 weeks, which will equal zero. So we're going to stop there, obviously, because once you reach zero, you're not going to pay your parents any more money. All right, so we've got to put this on our Cartesian plane. And once again, whenever we do practical situations, we seem to always end up with just positive numbers, positive X and Y axes. So we need to insert some lines. For our X axis. And let's put arrows at the end of it and we'll make it red like so and we'll reuse this line to make our y-axis all right now once again it's not called your x and y-axis this time this time it is your w and and d axis W for weeks, which is your x-axis, and D for the amount of debt you owe, which is your y-axis. Notice that our x-axis always seems to be replaced by something in terms of time. Weeks, hours, years, days. These seem to end up in the x-axis. Alright, so W for weeks, D for debt. And the weeks go up by fives in our table. And you really just want to make sure when you do it, you want um, you want to make sure that you're getting close to the end. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25. So you want to pick a, a scale where you almost use the whole the whole line. Almost. It doesn't have to be the whole line, but almost. Alright, and notice we just got to 40 weeks and it's almost near the end. So that worked out well. And also our debt, it would work, I think it would work quite well if we go up by thousands. 1,000, in fact we'll be a little lazy, we'll write 2k, 3k, instead of writing thousands each time, 6k, 7k, and 8k. Alright, so once again we got close to the end of the line and that's what we want to see happening. Alright, let's put our values in, so 0 weeks lines up with 8 grand, um, let's do this in a, in a blue colour. Uh, five weeks lines up with seven grand, and we're just going to keep going, little x's, and you'll find that when you get to the 40th week, you've got nothing owing. All right, so we'll put our nice straight line over those x's, make it a little thicker, and this time something a little different. I'm actually not going to put an arrow on it. And the reason I'm not is because once you get to 40 weeks, it's not going to keep going. So we, there's no need to put the arrow there. All right, now that graph is done now. Question B says find the equation of the straight line in terms of D and W. So we start with our gradient intercept formula, Y equals MX plus B. And probably the easiest one to find would be your Y intercept which in this case is 8,000. Y intercept being where it crosses the Y axis or the D axis in this case. And M stands for gradient. 
let's work out the gradient this time. So we'll use the X's and sort of draw across and make a right angle triangle. Okay, notice it really doesn't matter where you put your right angle triangle, it always seems to work out in the end. Okay, now being careful because you don't want to just count squares, you don't want to go one, two, three, four, because these are going up by thousands. So if I go from 2,000 to 6,000, this is, this is a rise of 4,000. And if we look at our run, it goes from 10 over to 30. So this is not a run of 1, 2, 3, 4, it's a run of 20. If I go 30 minus 10, it's a run of 20. Okay, so our gradient, M, is rise over run or 4,000 over 20. Uh, which comes out to 200. So gradient's 200. Alright, so we're going to rewrite our formula, and instead of m, it's 200x, and instead of b, it's 8,000. Okay, so that's our formula in terms of y and x, but they want it in terms of d and w. Since d stands for y, it's going to be d equals, and w stands for x, we're going to write 200w plus 8,000. That is our equation now. And with this equation, we can... Oh, actually, one, one thing I've noticed, one mistake I've just noticed right now, is we said that the gradient was 200, but remembering back to your running man, here's our, our running man here. All right, he would be running downhill if he's running to the right. So we need to change our gradient to be negative 200 in each case, so this is, our equation is negative 200w plus 8000, very important, otherwise your solution will be wrong, negative 200w plus 8000, and then we're going to go negative 200 times w, which is 27, plus 8000, and we'll see what we get. We get $2600 which means that after 27 weeks, Jim will owe his parents $2,600.